40. Okay. So welcome everybody to our celebrity chef class. And we have chef Amanda Johns of A New You Raw is the company that she owns. So I wanna just tell you a little bit about her before I turn it over to her. Cause some of you may know her, some of you may not. Um, but her journey started several years ago at a time when her health really wasn't that good. So she was really sick for many years and was kind of stuck in bed and was even facing the threat of death. Her doctor told her she, that, that she had problems with her heart and had problems with her immune system. So her immune system is something that helps fight disease and keeps us healthy. So that's what an immune system does. So even though she had all of these challenges, she really, really wanted to live. So on her journey to health and wellness, she decided she was just gonna listen to her own body and really turn to healthy whole foods as the answer. So instead of taking a lot of drugs and all this stuff like pharmaceuticals, um, she decided to go with really healthy whole foods. So today she is a vibrant and healthy woman and just a beautiful person in general, a wonderful person to know. And she wants to share her amazing experience with everyone. So she is so many different things. She is, and I'm gonna see if anyone else has joined us that I need to admit. Okay, so she is a restorative health instructor, a nutrition coach, a licensed massage therapist, a licensed spiritual healer coach. She teaches raw food classes and does nutritional consults at Jacksonville Health and Wellness Center, which is a very well-known health and wellness center for nutrition in the Jacksonville area. So her goal is to teach you how to eat healthy food so your body can be healthy too. So welcome um, Chef Amanda Johns. I am gonna turn it over to you and pin your video so everybody can see you and you can say hi and get started. Welcome. Hey, how are you guys doing tonight? Where everybody's good, they're on mute right now, so. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much you guys for joining us tonight. Um, I know Don had said it's a little later than normal, but um, it's still nice outside, so I thought, hey, we can still do one late at night. So like Don said, I um, do raw foods. That's kind of what I'm known for. Uh, a lot of people know me by the raw food lady. That happens to be one of my nicknames. Sometimes people actually introduce me as, as the raw food lady, <laughs> which is funny. But um, basically, I'm just going to kind of go through the recipe. But the first thing that I know Don gave me my background, that I was really ill. And... It's a journey sometimes if someone, so be patient if you're on that journey. But if you're not, you can always, always do healthy foods just to kind of do as preventative care. So let me um, give you a couple of blurbs of like what raw foods are and then I'll go over what we're gonna do. And I'll just kind of step by step and if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. That sounds great. So um, let's talk about the different, the three things that will always help you remember what the difference is between cooked and raw. So the first thing is temperature, texture, and content. If you remember those three things, you'll always remember the difference between cooked and raw. So basically with the temperature, it's not above 118 degrees. So you can use a dehydrator, you can get the texture of cooked foods with blenders and dehydrators. So you don't necessarily have to eat something cold if it's raw. So um, you can still eat warmed foods in the winter when it's raw. Most people ask me that question and I'm like, no, you can still eat warmed foods because you're just not gonna exceed that temperature. So the reasoning that you're not exceeding that temperature is the content. So basically when something is in a whole food form, it contains these tiny little enzymes and phytochemicals that are inside of it. So when you eat them, then it's inside of your body, it becomes a part of you. So that's why with raw foods, it's super healthy for the body just because it's the food in its natural form. So just remember, it's the temperature, you don't wanna go above 118, the texture, meaning that we can use blenders and dehydrators to get the same effect as cooked food, and just the content. When it's food, it just becomes a part of you. 
All right, so I'm going to go through. Um, I, uh, I guess, Don, did you send this little sheet that has the holy basil info on it? No, I didn't. I don't know if I saw that one. So if you could review some of it, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I'm just going to go over it and then it, I'll resend it too so you guys have it. It actually has the measurements for the recipe today. Also, oh, yeah, I sent that. Yes, I did send that. But I okay. didn't, I don't know if I saw something about specifically holy basil. So if you could, yeah, review that, that would be amazing. Okay, so basically, um, I'm going to go through the basils. I'll go up close here in a second. But holy basil is also known as Tulsi, which is a name from India. So it's used a lot in Ayurvedic foods. And it can be used for tea. So I gave you a little tea recipe on there, too. So basically, it's holy in India, like I was saying, it's known as it's holy, but it's also known for its magical influence. It brings good luck into your home. So if there is repeated tries of getting holy basil to grow in your house or basil, it could be a sign of unwanted energies in the home. It also works good for bacterial and fungal infections, it also has a calming effect when drank as a tea. So I gave you a little recipe on there of just, you know, heating up some water and putting a few leaves in, and you can also drink it and it helps reduce anxiety. So those are some of the things that are the benefits of basil and just happens to be one of my favorite foods. So that's why I said, for kids, it would be really good if they have to take a test and they're worried about a test or something like yes. that, or maybe for yes. adults worry about stuff at work, like right. and even just the smell is very calming, I find. Right. And it's very good just to sit and sometimes drink a tea, it helps you think. Mm. You can just eat some of the leaves, either way, that works. Or you can just make the dip and pesto and put it on some crackers, which is what we're going to do today. So I'm going to roll through what we're going to use. Um, I did say that the high powered blender is optional in the recipe because if you didn't soak the cat, like if you didn't have cashews and soak them, I gave you the recipe where you could just buy the Miyoko's cheese. I'm going to do a close up here in just a second. Okay. If you bought the Miyoko's cheese, you're going to skip the first part that we're going to do. And you're just going to do the food processor portion and add the cheese. But I'm actually going to show you how to make the cashew cheese and or let's say that somebody has an allergic and they can't use cashews. You could use almonds or you could use walnuts to make the cheese out of or what you could do is just make the pesto, how we're going to do it, and you just pulse in some almonds and it'll just have a little bit more of a crunchy effect versus a cheese smooth effect. So you could do either one of those. Um, so like I said, I'm going to kind of go through, I think I'll just close up when I'm going through. That might make it a little easier for everybody to see. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. So first I'm going to talk about, I'm going to make this, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> I got no worries. We've, we've got, yeah, everyone's yeah. used to the virtual. It's so all good. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm going to lower this down just so you guys can see what I have on the table close up. Let me stick it on the table for a sec. Sorry. This is that um, technical part. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is the regular sweet basil. So I'm going to make, I'm going to use both actually, just because I love both of them. So the difference between the leaves are this one just has a little bit bigger of a leaf and it has more of a sweet type of texture to it versus this is the holy basil. So can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Yep. It has little ridges on the leaves. It has a stronger smell to it as well. I actually have little babies growing on the bottom. Cool. Yeah. So it's actually bloomed out some and then because it had little blooms on it and made and me some more. And where's a good place to get that? Because, um, you know, people in the local area might want to try that. And, and, and also, is it perennial? Because I know a lot of times I've tried to go regular basil and right. it always dies on me. Right. So one of the things that makes um, 
basil like dye when we pick it because like today I'm gonna pull it off that plant. Mm -hmm. You actually want to wait until it's about when you put it in the ground, you want to wait till it's about two foot tall before you actually harvest it, even though we're going to use it today from the actual plant. Mm -hmm. um, but on the norm to get it to do what you want, you may like to grow in the ground or in a pot, you may want to harvest it after it's about two foot tall. Okay. But it's a perennial, like it comes back year after year. Not necessarily. I think um, it's, it depends. I know my holy basil lived through the winter, but I don't know if it's considered an actual perennial. Okay, so uh, bring it in in the winter if you have it in a pot. Yes, yeah, I was okay. gonna say, it needs to stay in the warm environment. Um, the sweet one, I haven't actually got it to live through the winter. I've yeah. only got the, uh, <laughs> the other one to yeah. do, so. Um, okay, so I'm just going to kind of go through what I have on the table. So I have the um, parsley. It's in here with dill, even though I'm not going to use dill, because one of the things I was going to show you guys is this is what I do. I make like a vase. And so it looks so beautiful, like flowers. Um, <laughs> and it smells awesome. But I sit it inside the fridge like that. Okay. And I do that because sometimes when we buy something that's green, it, it tends to die quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you actually put it in the water, just like you would a flower, it stays good for a lot longer. That's a great tip. Yeah, so it's, a, it's the way that, because I go through a lot of greens, because I do a lot of salads and a lot of salad greens, and you wanna have to come up with these little nifty ways to get it to last longer. So the other thing that I do is put it inside of plastic bins, like if I get a bunch of salad, greens that I can't put in water like the uh, parsley, mm -hmm. I will put it inside of glass bins and close it in the fridge just to try to get it to live, you know, a little bit yeah. longer until I eat it. I go through it pretty quick, but just in case I have the base method. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. So then um, I soaked the cashews. Mm-hmm. So I soak them probably for maybe like two hours. You can do it overnight if you want. Doesn't necessarily have to be soaked overnight. And so the other thing that I have is like this little tiny strainer that we're gonna use and I'm just dumping the water out. So when you dump the water out, you're just gonna, you don't need the water anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump it while I'm going to the other stuff. Okay. So the coconut oil, that I have it in just my regular jar. We're gonna measure all this stuff out. Then I'm gonna talk about like what we're gonna make the cheese out of first. So basically this is miso. And miso can be made from chickpeas. It can be made from soybean. It's considered a fermented food. So basically they cook beans and then they go through this fermentation process and it can be used in a lot of raw foods. Um, it's a good bacteria for your tummy. So it basically helps that good bacteria in your system to build. So it's a good way to make the cheese. And with the miso, it's a fast way to make the cashew cheese versus some of the other recipes taking a little bit longer where they have to sit up. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that with this because it's already fermented. Cool. It's very salty. So I have here on the table if somebody wants to use salt but this happens to be pretty salty so just kind of I would make your cheese and then give it a taste before you actually added any salt that's listed on the recipe okay that was a good point because if some of my kids don't have miso I was gonna ask if they omit it then they just taste it and need to add a little bit more salt Yes. Okay, I see, I see the do is, is miso, so that's good. Okay. Okay, so also the other thing that you can use to kind of get that like fermenty flair is the lemon juice that's on the recipe does go in the pesto. Okay. But you would just use a little bit more of it than what I put in the cheese. I think I put like a eighth of a teaspoon. I was going to put it with the miso just a little bit because okay. lemon has um that shelving effect too meaning like it's like a preservative but it's natural 
Cool. So I always put just a tad of it in the miso cheese, not where it really tastes like lemon, because I want the cheese to be neutral in case I want to use it for another recipe. Okay. And then you add some to the basil just so it doesn't make the basil black in okay. its recipe. Oh yeah, that's a good point, which I know we've talked about oxidation and other recipes that we've done okay. and how the citrus helps different things from turning brown. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Just because it's, like I said, it's a natural preservative that mm -hmm. doesn't seem to bother the system. Okay. So um, I do have a regular lemon here. If somebody did want to just use a regular lemon, if you didn't have the lemon juice already, you're totally fine. You can do that. I have a little olive oil, which goes into the pesto. Mm -hmm. um, there is two tablespoons of that in there, one to two, but it depends on the person. So if you like things with a little bit more mm -hmm. olive oil, you could always add just a little bit more. Okay. The Thank gold. you. Savannah is showing us her olive oil. Good job, honey. <laughs> Sweet. Yay. Good. Okay. And then that's basically it for this recipe. But I was also going to talk about the crackers and the ways that I use it. So um, really quick, I'm gonna just show you guys the crackers and then I'm gonna um, put that on there at the end. So these are called thin slackers. These are organic, they're made out of quinoa. Love so those. A little close so you guys can see it. Yes, we use those in the cooking classes. Perfect. These are really good for an alternative. Uh, the other alternative is um, for like just the regular simple mill almond crackers they have like a little bit of almond flour and um, flaxseed cassava flour that's something else that you could use they're also pretty salty so again with adding salt just telling just making sure everybody understands so um i'm gonna go ahead and start the vitamix portion okay so can, can you guys see, see yeah the whole yep. thing okay Perfect. looks good so the first thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put the miso and a little bit of the coconut oil in the bottom first. Oh. Give it a little spin just so that it's already in there. And then I'm going to start adding the cashews. With the Vitamix, you would want to use something called a tamper. And basically it helps with that mixing of the nuts. It can take like one fourth cup of water to one half cup. Sometimes it depends on how long you soak the nuts or it kind of depends on, you know, how smooth you want it. So usually about one fourth cup is going to get it pretty smooth. Sometimes I add a little bit more. If the, if the Vitamix is getting pretty bound up, you can just add just a little bit more, but so you are going to go ahead. But quick question. Yeah. So we need to get a, how much of water ready? Um, one fourth cup. Okay, one fourth cup water as well. Okay. Okay. Got it. Just in case you need it, it's always good to have a little bit on standby. Um, just because with the nuts, sometimes they get a little bound up in the blender. You may need a little bit for the pesto, but you definitely less is better okay. because you're wanting that creamy effect. Okay. So I'm gonna put just the two. Um, two tablespoons of miso and so everybody can get out their little spoons okay getting mine out okay so question okay go ahead go ahead how much the two yeah. tablespoons okay two yeah. tablespoons do you hear that of the miso into the blender yep two tablespoons of miso right into the blender okay Okay. Okay. And you, like I said, I love miso, so sometimes I use just a little bit more. <laughs> because sometimes I will add salt because it will be my salt. Okay. So um, I might add a tad bit, but you're just going to get that in there. So the one fourth cup of water, you just kind of want to add just a little bit and then add a little bit more. Okay, so like I said, sometimes you need all of it, sometimes you don't, sometimes you need more just because of the nuts. Okay, so add some now or no? Yeah, you can add just a little bit because we're no. going to spin this on the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to put just a little bit of the lemon juice 
but it, it would be like a one eighth, so it would be a really small amount. If you don't have a one eighth on your measure, just go tiny, you know, like a little tiny, tiny bit. So we talked about this yesterday in the after school cooking classes. Half of one quarter teaspoon is one eighth. So if you only have your little quarter teaspoon, okay, you guys are gonna do that like half of that. Half. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just to give it a little show, you know, something to help spin with. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is put the lid on and then I'm just gonna let it lightly. My Vitamix, can you guys see the front of it? Yep. Okay. So basically it has a dial on it. So you can um, just use it at that lowest setting. Once you get the nuts in, that's when you're gonna start going up a little bit more. Or maybe bring the camera down a tiny bit because we can see the whole Vitamix, but not the dial. Okay. Yeah. Because I have it in the front. Okay. I don't know if I can bring it down anymore. I might have to just show it to you guys. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, we got it now, cool. Okay, so there's like a little dial that's gonna go up and down. Yeah. A little pulse button. Okay. Um, you may not have to necessarily use that high powered button okay. portion. You just so kind of want to use that. Like on a normal one, just do like a pulse maybe? Yeah, with this. Mm -hmm. okay. just for the, I'm just kind of like pulsing it a little bit just so it spreads throughout the bottom of the blender. And then we're going to start adding the nuts. So the one thing that I do with the taper is I also use it as like a tamper turn. The, um, I use it as like my lid. See how it's sticking out of the top? Yeah. yeah. That way I can just kind of spin it around. Spin it around. Oh yeah, that's um, fun. Yeah, just so I can kind of keep, because sometimes you don't want to sit it down just yet because it has stuff on the tip of it. So what I normally do is I take half of the nuts. I don't put all of them in all at once. Ooh, that's a good tip. Yeah, just because they're going to get a little bound up. It's going to get loud when we start blending. Okay. Just get a couple of scoops out. My water's going everywhere. Yeah. So I do about half and then I'm going to blend and then I'm going to do a little bit more. somewhere okay all right and then a tiny bit of the coconut oil I'm using go ahead and add that because we just did the lemon and the water and the miso so a little tiny bit it's a half a teaspoon of the coconut oil okay. that just helps it to smooth out does it so my coconut oil isn't necessarily melted but oh, okay doesn't matter it doesn't yeah i was gonna say it doesn't okay. it's so, so what like coconut oil and olive oil are considered raw foods essentially um technically no um mm -hmm. it just depends on the person but usually you can make the recipe without the oil it just doesn't turn out quite as creamy. Okay. The, the pesto um, would be a lot drier if it didn't have the oil in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there's different types of olive oil so that people consider like cold pressed and different things. Right. To be a little bit more healthier. So I always tell everybody just pick the best version that you can do. Okay. And, and that way it's, it's still a healthy fat. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the things I've always wondered about raw food was about the oils, because I know plant-based is no oil, mm -hmm. right? Like true whole food plant-based, but I still use a little olive oil here and there. I do too, and just because I was saying like that, it smooths out the recipe yeah. a lot. Um, it gives it that kind of cooked kind of consistency that you're looking for. Yes, but true, true raw foods is like no salt, yeah. no oil. Yeah. It's sometimes <laughs> hard. Right. It's sometimes hard for folks to get that down. Um, if it's too plain, if it's just like just the greens. So I always say as long as we're trying to be healthy 90% of the time, and if we eat that small percentage that, you know, is, is something that somebody would consider not healthy, I actually think that oils are fine. I okay. use them. 
Cool. So, all right, so we're gonna do that half, and then we're gonna let it spin just a little bit, and then we'll add the other. Okay. So I'm just gonna kinda see how it does with just a little bit of water. And then I'm gonna come up just a little bit with it. So this is when you can start raising the bag a little bit. So usually what I do is just leave the lid on. And I can start adding them to this thing. So usually you just get them out and out of the We're kind of having audio issues. Can yeah, um, I'm having the same audio issue. Okay, um, Amanda, has anything changed with your phone? Mm -mm. Okay. Oh, I hear you now. Okay, you're fine now. It might have just been when you blended. Your phone was like, "What do I do?" <laughs> All right. right. So when you blend. I'm gonna put. When you go to blend, I'm gonna mute you. Okay, go ahead and do it. I'm gonna okay. Blend. All right. Here we go. You'll see me do that. We need it. So guys, I'm doing a lot of tamping down with mine and I'm, it looks like a, a Chef Amanda is too. So just keep smooshing yours down. All right, we're good. So basically, it's going to be that kind of consistency. Can you guys see it? Yep, looks good. Looks really good. So, so it's not supposed to be chunky. Right. Yeah, <laughs> okay. smooth, smooth. So, work to do. Yeah, so Savannah, keep blending until it gets smooth. All right. And you it just want to do a bit. Yeah, because I have a normal blender. I don't have a Vitamix. So I, I added a little more water. We're okay. using a Ninja, so. OK. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Probably need to add a little more water in this thing. That's what yeah. I did. Yeah, that's what I did. And it'll still turn out fine with the more water. It'll just, you know, it'll it'll get real smooth and creamy. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. You move this out. I'll wait for you guys to do that just for a sec if you want to. You guys can ask any questions if you want. Move some of this. I'm going to grab a couple more leaves in the basil real quick. Okay. Wait, did you add your second half of the nuts yet? Yeah, I already added the second half. I did it through the top of the blender. Okay, I got to do that too. Okay. okay. All right, just keep on going. We're, we're hanging in there. Okay. Okay, so... The next thing that we're going to do, because um, I didn't say scissors on one of the things that you need, you can cut parsley 
and the basil either by just picking it off mm -hmm. or you can use scissors either way. Okay. So now we're going to use the food processor. You guys tell me if you can see everything. We're good. <laughs> How's this? Good. That looks good. good. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Sorry, I was blending there for a second. Okay, you're good. <laughs> you're all good. It's all part of the process. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is where you can peel the garlic. Mm. And one easy way to assist with peeling garlic is to just squish it with your knife. So can you guys see the um, cutting board and stuff? Yes. Okay. Yep. But so I'm just gonna squish it and it just helps it to be a little easier to peel. Because you wanna throw the garlic in and the olive oil in, just so how we did with the blender, you're just letting it pulse for a few minutes and that way it's small before you actually add everything else. And if you feel it, go ahead. Um. Do we, where do we put the garlic? So you're gonna put it inside the food processor. So are you, but you're putting it in a separate, so should, if we only have the blender, we should take the cheese out of the blender and you then we'll put the garlic in there. So if you guys only have a Ninja, you're gonna take your cheese out of the Ninja and put it in a bowl. So I'm gonna put my cheese in my soaking bowl. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to add the garlic back to you the oil. To back. Right, you can, do, you can do the whole recipe in the actual blender. Okay. The one thing um, about the blender is sometimes it will get the basil and parsley super small. Um, and kind of with pesto, you're wanting it to be that like thick where there's still big chunks and pieces in it. Okay. So when we do it in the blender, we're just going to pulse it versus actually just running it like we would with the cheese. Okay. Pull this out. Kelly, do you guys are okay? Do you guys have a question? Sure. No, we're good. Sorry. Okay, you're good. Okay. Um. So Amanda, while you're doing that, I'm gonna try and finish blending because my like I said, I don't have the Vitamix. So while you're doing that, I'm gonna quickly try and finish blending mine and then get it out and get the garlic in there. Sure. Okay. And then I am going to add the olive oil. I did measure that out. It's um, two tablespoons. So once you guys get it out of the blender and you put it back in, you just put the olive oil and the garlic in the blender. Okay, so tell me once more, you did two tablespoons of olive oil, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then if this, you can go ahead and add the lemon juice if you want okay. to the um, blender again. And this would be a one tablespoon, little, little less probably just because you already put a little tiny bit in the cheese. Okay. Unless you're like me and you really love lemon. Yeah, <laughs> I do it. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, how is everybody doing? Is everybody keeping up or do you need more time? Give me a thumbs yeah. up. Good. Okay, we got a thumbs up. Good. Good, good. Everybody okay? Okay. Everybody's good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and blend. Okay, go for it. Okay, so sometimes with the food processor, there's always this little trick that it has to be locked down because I've done that before. So you just want to make sure it's good and locked down, or sometimes you'll push the button and it won't go. And you're like, what's happening? Okay. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is start um, filling up a dry measure cup with the basil. 
So depending on if you're gonna do the whole two cups of cheese mm -hmm. with the pesto, it's because I'm a smaller version by just doing one cup. Okay. But if you're gonna do it, you wanna do the two cups. So now the holy basil is gonna have smaller leaves. So it'll you'll tend to use a little bit more of the leaves, but you they're stronger flavor too. So I'm gonna use a little bit of both. And so I'm gonna harvest my plant, but hopefully it will grow. Because <laughs> you wanna wait till it's in the ground and it's two foot tall before you actually harvest it. But it's all good, it's too good, we can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> sorry buddy. How's everybody doing? Hey, give me a thumbs up if you're doing okay. You guys doing okay? I think we're, okay, good, we got a thumbs up, okay. Good. Good. Okay, so with dry measure, you can kind of push it down in there if you want to. If you want it to be a lighter flavor, then you don't have to pack so much in. But because I love it, I'm going to push it down. <laughs> okay. So, but the first thing that you probably want to do is do some of the parsley first. I should have said that. Just because it's a little bit of a thicker when it when you pulse it so you can kind of pulse it down i did put a dry measure on there if you want to use dry optimally it would be better if you use the fresh just because we're making that like pesto type of effect yeah um so fresh is always kind of better but i, I would say use whatever you have and still make it work mm -hmm. so i'm gonna do one tablespoon i'm not gonna fill up my i'm just using a cup just to use it okay. so it's about one fourth of a dry measure cup so i didn't have one fourth out here so i'm just going to use very small on the bottom if you want to add more you can always add more so you did about one like eyeballing it one fourth cup of the parsley the parsley yeah okay, okay. and if you really want you can take all the little tiny tails off, but honestly, I, they're going to pulse in. Okay. So you don't have to necessarily do that. Add just a tad more. Oops. Just because I love parsley and basil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can always keep it nice and light. You don't have to do it strong. And then I'm just going to pulse that in just a little bit. How's everybody doing with taking the cheese out and putting it back in? We're good? Is it fine if we mix it all into one? Like if we made the recipe in one? You like could. Like put all the ingredients in the blender at once? You could do it. Um, just because now that you're doing the garlic, you may have wanted to put the garlic in when you actually did the water portion in the beginning when we pulsed it. So that's why I was gonna say you may wanna take it out just cause the nuts are pretty binding. But you okay. can probably throw it all in and then just, you just wanna blend it probably a little more before you put the um, parsley and the basil in. Yeah, it looks good. So, okay. should we, so we don't okay. put all the cheese in though. We only put some, like we just take the cheese out right now. Yeah, I was gonna say just because unless you wanna do the whole thing of cheese, you can. Yeah. I've been a little bit of it out just so you can pulse yeah. it it might make it a little easier on the blender that way it actually chews up the garlic okay it's down a lot you could do that okay yeah that's what i did because i'm using i'm using the same blender um, okay so i just took my cheese out oh we just watched your video it still doesn't taste good, right? do our best. oh there you uh, go you're back okay yeah okay let me um okay. let me plug just for a second while you guys are blending. Okay. If we blend it all together, is it still gonna taste the same? It's I mean, still gonna taste the same. Yeah, it it'll just still taste be the same. a little stronger with the garlic if it didn't get blended all the way in. So it'll be okay. okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. If you blend it Thank all together, you. it'll be delicious. Okay. Right, it'll still be good. It's just yeah. yeah, there's sometimes with the blender with the nuts. 
it kind of has like an order that you want to do it. But I always say you could always add just a tiny bit more water and then let it sit up so it dries out just a little bit. And that might help too. Like if you were to get it too wet with the blender. All right, you guys let me know when you're done blending. I'm just gonna kind of plug in just for a sec. I'll have to come up with a plan on the next one for the battery. I'm like the battery is dying. Okay. Is everybody good on blending or how are we doing? How's everybody doing on their blending? Okay, or you need more time? We're still working at it. Okay, still, okay. We're, we're still working. No worries. So it's okay for you to plug in for a second. We're all gonna work on our blending skills here. Okay, and okay. if anybody has any questions, you can feel free to ask. Okay, cool. All right, I'll pin myself for a second while you're working on that. Okay. Okay. All right, you guys, this is what mine is looking like. So mm -hmm. I still need to do a little more blending here. And then, but I've got my garlic in there, I've got my olive oil, and then I had a little cheese left in there. But Perfect. Yeah, okay, good. So I'm just gonna blend a tiny bit more, but okay. it smells amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna all right, I'm gonna mute myself for two seconds. Okay, go ahead. I swear this is the problem I had with my last blender is that it gets that little air pocket under there. Right. And I just can't like the same I've never had a blender that hasn't done that. Maybe so with like that, that I have those little tiny, tiny um spatulas. Yeah. That I can kind of push things down yeah. to the bottom. I mean, I don't know if anyone else has that problem, but I, like the food processor does help for sure with things like that, but mine's looking better. I'm close. I'm definitely close. Okay. I think I'm close to adding my cheese back. Okay. And I, it looks like everybody else is still doing their blending. Okay, so this is with the garlic and you put in Yeah, I'm just gonna I, I'm just gonna try a little bit. Okay. I think I can unplug now. I can go I'll use the um the food processor. Just so I kind of give you guys an idea of what it looks like. Okay. I'm gonna pin you back in a second here. Yeah, sure, no worries. Oh my god, I just took a little taste. It is so tasty. Oh my goodness. Good. Amazing. Or right, I'm two more. Okay, I'm gonna pin you back. Do you want me to pin you back now? Hold on, give me one second. I'm gonna unplug real quick. All right, I'm gonna blend again. Okay. It looks like I think we got like it. Like I once I plugged it back in. Okay. All right. So when we're ready to add cheese back in, how much would we be adding? So since how you're going to add back, I would do small amounts, like um, probably, let's see, because it's two cups, maybe like a cup, because there was some in the bottom. Yes. Just so okay. that you can pulse it, um, pulse it in just a little bit. Okay. Oh, man, this is going to be so good. Yeah, yeah. And, okay, are you ready? I got to pin you back again. But okay, before so I go... Let me just show you. I cut up these purple carrots. Look at the inside of the purple carrot. That's so cute. I know. They're so awesome. I love them. Okay. I'm pinning you back again. Okay. okay. And All right. So with, um, I'm going to show you like what it looks like in the food processor consistency. 
And like I said, with the blender, you're not going wrong. It's still going to taste good. Just sometimes with the food processor, it gives you more of like cake-like consistencies. The blender is going to give you more of that really super, super smooth sometimes. So I pulsed in a little bit of the parsley. So I'm going to pulse in the one tablespoon or the one cup of the basil. The garlic smells awesome. I'm like, so good. It does smell so good. Okay. I'm just going to give it a little pulse. Then I'm going to add in the cup of cheese. Oh, we just lost you again. Oh, my battery's like not holding up there. Mm -hmm. Okay, how are we doing? Good, you're back. Okay. okay. Yeah, I may have to find the extension cord to the actual um, thing. Do you want to just unpin me just for a second? I'll find one. This is, the, this is the hazards of doing virtual, I guess. But, you know, we're all learning. So exactly. I'm just glad that we can be here and be live. This is so cool because it's so no, hard I love to get it. everybody together live. So I think this is super cool. And I think about how many times we've done a cooking class where – like my kids that are in the cooking class know, right, that you do a small part of the recipe, but at least when you're doing this, you get to do the whole thing, which is kind of cool. And your parents get to actually try your recipe, which is awesome. So mine is coming out, I don't know, what does yours look like? Does it look kind of like that? How does yours look? What do you think? Let me see what yours looks like. Okay. You guys have that awesome ninja. Okay, I can kind of see it. Okay, that looks good. Have you guys taken a taste yet? Ooh, it sure smells good. Mine might, I might want to pulse it a few more times, but it sure smells we, really amazing. We tasted it, it's delicious. Yes, yummy. Ooh, Very, I know, I'm so excited. I'm gonna take one of my purple carrots and I'm just gonna go ahead and dip that in there. Good. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna be really close to me because I'm gonna have to try to plug it in down here where I have the blenders plugged in. Oh, it's so good. And all right, technical difficulty, but we are all good. All right, are you back? Yes. Okay, I'm switching myself um, off. Okay, here we go. You're okay, back. So, all right, we're good. I just had to get, grab a little cord. <laughs> So we're going to have a cord in the scene for the moment, but all right. So I'm going to add my one cup of cheese to the blender, I mean to the food processor. It's so tasty. It's really good. Mm. I think um, the cheese can be used for so many things, like it's amazing. Mm. I've made an almond cheese out of slivered almonds that was really good like an almond ricotta perfect but this is really yummy in the pesto i've never done it in a pesto like this okay right because yeah. you can use any nut it. it doesn't have to be cashew if someone doesn't want to use cashews i know i love cashew but i can't believe my daughter's allergic to nut walnuts cashews peanuts like everything except almonds and that's it. <laughs> okay. Which almonds are awesome though, because they're the alkaline nut. Yes. Yeah. So I guess I can't complain. Yeah. They're the best ones. It's all good. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to add just a little bit. And I really, just the miso does make it salty. It, like, you know, I haven't had to add any salt. <laughs> Right, and then so if somebody really, really wants to add salt, they can, but honestly, it turns out pretty good with just the miso. Okay. Mm. All right, and then I'll show you guys the consistency once I blend. Okay. Because I'm just gonna kind of pulse it in. A little greener. So it depends on how you like it. It's good either way. 
but I'll show you guys the consistency. It's more of really light. And if you want it, you know, a lot more basil and stuff, you could just add, that's, you add two cups versus just adding the one cup mm -hmm. that I just added. So I'm gonna do that. I added, I, from Publix, from Publix I got this, I'll show everybody really quick. And I just sure. added the whole thing. Yes. That's um, going to be equivalent to what you would need. Okay. Actually, they did not have that. I was going to get one and I was like, oh, they're out. Yeah, this says two ounces. So I think I just threw the whole thing in. Right, which is perfect. That's what you need. Yeah. Okay, good. Totally perfect. Good. Yeah, that's a little easier than picking it off the plant. Um, I just couldn't get it today. Well, if I had it growing, I've got a little basil growing in my garden, but. I have shiso growing like crazy, but it's okay. a really interesting, it's supposed to be like a Thai basil, but it's growing like crazy, but it's strong. It's really strong. Strong, so is the holy basil. The holy basil has that really strong taste. So that's why I said on the recipe kind of one to two cups, because if you were using solely the holy basil, you may only want to just use one mm -hmm. because it's a pretty strong flavor in the recipe. Okay. And you can always add more parsley or something if you wanted it. It's going to be a little bit greener. You can even go even more green if you want, but actually that's probably good enough for the flavor. Okay. And I usually take this, try to get the big pieces off the side just to kind of scoop it down. Mm. It's amazing. So how is everybody else's turning out? Good? How's everybody doing? Is everybody about done with theirs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Chef Amanda, how, what are some different ways we can use? Okay, so um, you can use it on the crackers, which is kind of what I was going to show today. Uh -huh. um, also, I always tell everybody, if you get things too liquidy, they can also be used as a salad dressing. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that I'm going to do with mine tonight, instead of just doing the crackers, is just putting them on, putting it on zucchini noodles, adding a little tomato, kind of making like a little pesto, creamy pesto. Mm -hmm. um, that you, that's usually what I do with it mainly. Um, and you could always just add, you know, like a, the noodles. I actually have a spiroli, but you can buy zucchini noodles already spiroli at the store and we do um we've got spiralizers in the cooking classes that we use sometimes right so the kids will sometimes make their own little noodles right good perfect see you guys are awesome yeah and i use that thing for i love it because sometimes i will just you know spiralize some of the noodles because I, I know mine was i think mine was called a spiroli was the name of it or something but spiralizer yeah. is what it is yeah but um I actually throw those in salads and different things. So I don't necessarily always use them as like a spaghetti or an Alfredo kind of situation. Mm -hmm. I'll use them in anything. I love them. Yeah. But with this, that's the other thing that I do with it. It's either I can use it as a salad dressing or I can use it as what I'm going to make with it tonight, which is just using the noodles. Um, so to make a salad dressing, you just add more water. You can just add more water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, it's up to you. Some people want to add more oil. You can always do that either way. How long does something like this last in the fridge? I would say, um, with me, it's hard to say because I usually eat it pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, just because it's so good and you can put it on so many different things. I actually put it on the inside of wraps too. Yes. That's a great idea. Um, so that's another idea that I use with it. I would say probably maybe like four days, four or five days. Cool. Just because you put the lemon juice in and the lemon juice kind of makes things hold. So then I'm going to get some out. Taste test is always my favorite part because I haven't tested it yet. Okay, I'm going to grab a little spoon. All right. Oh, is there a name for this dip? 
Or is it just like a type of dip? Like a cat. Um, well, I had the name on it for holy basil dip, but you could just call it basil. Um, basil dip, basil pesto. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good question. Mm -hmm. You could call it holy basil salad dressing if you made it into a salad dressing. Ooh, this is good. So good. Okay, we went that So out. awesome. So sometimes I will put it on top of the crackers and then I just cut up like a little bell pepper or a little tomato. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes with the raw foods, I'll make raw flax crackers and stuff and put them on top of that. But these are a perfect snack, so. Yeah. Uh, All right, how's everybody liking it so far? Excuse me, this is what I got so far. Okay. I'm gonna try and pin you, hold on, hold it up. Oh, look at you, okay. so fancy. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Beautiful job, Savannah. All right, so does anybody have any questions? Okay, type in the chat or unmute yourself if you have any questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, just one second. No. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh. Thank you for coming. I know, so fun. And I gotta say, there's one plus of this whole thing is, is actually being able to eat the food that she made. <laughs> right, that, exactly. Right. That's so that's true. What, that's what makes the classes so much fun is at the oh, end yeah. you get to eat a meat, you get to eat something. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Awesome. So you okay. so okay, tell us really quick if you were gonna, and I know some people may need to sign off if they've already made theirs, but for everyone else to do the quick way with the Miyoko's cheese. Okay. How do you that's do that really quick? Why we haven't done. Yeah. So really quick, you would just pulse the garlic and the oil. Okay. And then you would add in the basil and the parsley. Mm -hmm. You'd pulse those down a little bit and then you would just add the thing of cheese. Okay. Sure. The whole and thing. You, and yeah, the whole thing. And if you wanted it super cheesy, you could always just do two of them. Two of them. Okay. You wanted more cheese, like cause how, how we did two cups, I want to say this is less okay. than the two cups of cashews that we soaked. Mm -hmm. So you would probably want to, you know, use maybe possibly two of them. Okay. Cool. And it's good too, because it's already fermented, so you're good to go. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll give All awesome. right, and I will, okay, I'm getting a thumbs up from my daughter, Gabby. Um, and I also will send out the recipe, like the final recipe after class, and then we'll also send a replay out as well. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. All right. So then I can see it. So that'll also get the recipe, we'll give the, um, the tea. Cool. Okay. And then I heard, I think Kelly and Savannah, you guys were going to, let me hear. Thanks again. Oh, okay. you're welcome. <laughs> Good. It was fun working with you guys. <laughs> thank you guys. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm getting thank yous from everybody. Fun class. Thank you. Okay. So many nice messages. So awesome. Chef Amanda, thank you so much for making the time to do this. It was so fun. I know technical difficulties can be difficult right now, but you know, we're doing crazy things with this virus right now. So I'm glad that this is a new learning curve that we'll be able to take into the future. So yeah, I actually think that it's a good idea just for the people who sometimes can't be present mm -hmm. for a class, but they really want to go, but they actually couldn't physically be there. So this is actually a great way to still share the information. So I love it. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And thank you all so much for joining us. And hopefully we will see you all soon. <laughs> okay. Yay. See you then. You guys Bye. Have to Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.